art people it's that time again so you know it is the months before the ban list goes up i like to get my ban list prediction up early so i can go ahead and get a ton of views so people can be like oh all right it's the month before ban list let me go ahead and search up some ban list predictions and then like boop there's my video and then people can watch so i've been doing this for a cool minute now you know i've been youtubing for almost three years now and you know ever since the first uh list that i've been youtubing i've been doing it so uh, we're just gonna go ahead and continue that pattern. So I'm gonna try to go ahead and uh, predict what Konami's gonna do to an extent. I mean, of course, no one can 100% predict Konami. I mean, they just have some curveballs, and you know, sometimes I'm just like, why did you do that? And why didn't you do this? And I, uh, you know, I just still don't understand some of the movements Konami makes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to uh, guess what Konami's gonna do with precedence, with what they would probably hit with what will promote that that they want to promote what will make them money and what will overall balance the game in their eyes you know? so uh you know i have particular hits that uh seem practical and uh some things didn't get hit which would be kind of obvious and uh yeah so i hope that you guys go ahead just sit back relax and uh, enjoy my balance prediction because generally these videos are kind of long because I'm a kind of long-winded person, I like to kind of go into detail and explain the my reason and logic for things. But uh, hopefully you guys get it, and uh, if you guys want to go ahead and disagree, then hey, more power to you. Uh, and if you want to, go ahead and put what you think Konami would do in uh, the comment se section below. Alright, so enough with that intro, let's go ahead and get started. So, we'll go ahead and start off with cards that are banned and by cards i mean card and if you guys can't guess what card i think is gonna get banned you guys should probably know it is literally the most sackiest card in the format and konami should have realized this all right snatch still snatch still should be banned like there i get it i get it konami you want to unban all of the cards and see hey is this still broke is this still busted you know the cards that you thought were extremely busted in the ocg you decide to go ahead and change an errata and uh you know try to bring them back into the game but you did not do that for snatch steel and snatch steel is still fucking broken like i think it, i believe it got banned in like March 20, 2007, so it's been like years since this card has been here, and I just, I, I, you know, I don't understand Konami's mentality to an extent, you know, when you look at the card, you know, you know Yu-Gi-Oh's getting faster and faster and faster and faster, if this card was already ban-worthy when the game way back was slower in comparison to now, then why would you think that it wouldn't be busted now, like, I, that clearly doesn't make any sense, you know, like, oh, well, you know, I, I mean, we're so fast that, you know, it's not going to be good, you know. It's not like we're trying to, you know, push for damage and OTK and, you know, have advantage. You know, fuck life points, you know. But, no, it's still busted, you know. And this card was banned even before Hidden Armory. But then you throw Hidden Armory with it, too. And swords at Dawn and all that sacky shit to just make sure that you sack the hell out of your opponent with Snatch Steel. And, you know, you got a problem, you know. And, and this card is already sacky by itself. But then when you integrate other shit, you know, it's just this card's like, no, no. You know, I kind of understand the gist of Konami, which I'm really surprised. Because generally, you know, I always say that the evidence was absence and not the absence of evidence, you know. But... <laughs> They go ahead and did it and slap me in the face and like, no, you're wrong, you know? Well, I, you know, I was like, well, you shouldn't unban Snatch still because of MST. And it clearly kind of seems like Konami was like, well, you know what? MST is being played. So let's go ahead and unban Snatch still because, you know, they'll just have MST. So it'll be totally fine. Yeah, but what if you don't? Then you get your monster stashed and you get your ass beat by not only your monster, but also your opponent's monster. You know, your opponent can attack with it, they can exceed with it, they can synchro with it, they can take the card, they can shut up their ass, because they, it's, I still, it just fucking took your shit, you know? And it's just like, alright, yeah, this card was like a curveball on the January list, no one saw it coming, no one wanted this coming, and this entire freaking format from January all the way into April has been sacking the living shit out of us, and if you haven't got sacked by this card, you must have been living under a rock, because goddamn, so, uh, this is the only card I can predict, uh, Konami banning, you know, they can clearly see that this card is unhealthy for the game. Once again, you tried it, and it's still 
still just too busted, you know, it's still too unhealthy for the game. So, you know, you can go ahead and put it back on the list. Uh, it's not making you any money, you know, it's not like you reprinted Snatch still. So, you know, you're making your fat stacks, you know, it's fairly easy to get your hands on. There's no real set that they're selling that's promoting Snatch still. And, you know, hopefully they learned from their lesson. They're like, you know what, yeah, let's go ahead and put Snatch still back on the list. Because, yeah, it's clearly broken. <laughs> Alright, so that, that's the only card I have banned. So, let's go ahead and move on to the limits. So, uh, for limited, I have Crush Card Virus. So, Crush, you know, Crush Card Virus, with its errata, not, you know, previous one, with its, uh, with its errata, with its rewording, an OCG, apparently in uh, the new set, the Gold Series 2, the Bling set, uh, Crush Card is in there. With its uh, new text. So, if they want to go ahead and, uh, you know, put us in text, that set is supposedly coming out, you know, March 20th. March 20th, the set comes out, you get your crush card, bam, the first, bam, crush card, legal, you know. And that, I mean, with its, with its re rewarding, it's not a terrible card, you know. It's not a super broken card. I actually did a review of it when I reviewed the uh, OCG's ban list. I'll go ahead and put that link in the description so you can hear my opinion more detailed about that. But, uh... You know, it's kind of interesting that you're going to go ahead and, you know, reprint the Crush card and then unban it because then, you know, the people who want to play Crush card uh, have easier access to it than, you know, you know, the older sets with the older uh, Crush card. So, you know, you know, they've been doing this for a while now. I mean, last list they, you know, eroded and unbanned Dark Strike Fighter. So uh, if they're going to do the same thing with Crush card, you know, as long as it's a chain checks, then that's fine, you know. Uh, so that probably means that to prevent... You know, things from being super splashable with it, Sangan will probably stay back on, stay on the list, you know, because then Sangan will literally be able to just, you know, be used for a crush card for everybody, and uh, they probably don't want that, but, you know, uh, you know, I just see this card maybe being like a nice little tech for maybe like, you know, heroes or Burning Abyss, but uh, overall, with its own text change, it's fine, it's fine, you know, it's not Snatch still broken, that's all I can say, <laughs> uh, and uh, special on note slash honor. If any of the other cards that were are you know changed in the LCG are also in the set, they will probably get limited as well. So that includes you know the new Ring of Destruction, the new Sinister Se Serpent, the new Exchange of Spirit, the new Temple of the Kings, and so to say, but probably the new Chaos Emperor Dragon, who in my opinion is still, even with this change, is still broken. But hey. I already did a video of that, like I said, if you want to hear my opinion on that, the link will be in the description. So, uh, there you go. So, honorable mentions to those fives along with Crush Card, like I said. The picture that we have only shows Crush Card, but if the other cards are also in the set, then hey, they'll probably get unbanned as well. Alright, and the actual hit, the actual limit, like, if uh, you didn't call this one, or you, you don't know about this card, then you're also still living under a rock. Um, you know, I've seen a ton of people's banless predictions, and I think everybody's in the same boat. And at this point, Konami, if you're not up for, you know, hitting this card, then, um, you can go fuck yourself, because this card needs to get hit. Alright, next card at one. Vanities. Come on. Everybody saw that coming. Vanities is healthy, yet unhealthy. It's a sword, but then also the sword is supposedly turning and stabbing you to an extent, you know? Uh, I've I've seen I've seen and I've heard both sides of the spectrum. You know, Vanities needs to get hit because you know it stalls and slows down the game to a snail's pace. It you know it blatantly just blinking stops special summoning, and you know it's unhealthy for the game. But then also here oh well, but it is healthy for the game because you know it slows down the meta and you know it, it's a balanced card and you know you you know, always get rid of it and like no 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 no. All right, here is where the whole balancing thing meta card call it the reason why vanities is not balanced is because we can clearly see from past formats that it's a problem card you know there has never been a ch sense where we're just like you know what yeah you know vanities that's that's cool that's cool you know like well you can't special something but i can't special something that's fair like no no they're gonna use this goddamn double-edged sword where they're probably gonna drop something on the field that you can't get over without special something and flip with that vanities you know and i think that it's definitely i i, I could definitely see vanities getting hit this time uh you know they re they reprinted it and the legendary collection and you know made money off of that but then they're just like hey let's do it again you know another reprint you know it's not like konami 
doesn't see Van Hades because it's pretty obvious that Konami sees this card. They can see it. You know, they wouldn't. You know, it's kind of difficult to reprint a card and make some money off of it. You know, and put it as a nice uh, card in the Secret Forces set without seeing it and seeing what it's been doing. You know, and uh, you know they made their money off of it. You know, they're just like, hey, you know, here, you know, we reprinted Secret Forces. People are buying up Secret Forces. You know, it's not just for the Necros. You know, you can get your hands on some nice Van Hades too. But then. It turns around and fucks with Necros, like, like, where are you going with this, Konami? Like, I get it, you wanted, you wanted to go ahead and sell Secret Forces with all the good shit, you know, get, get your money, make your money, awesome. Alright, Secret Forces is, to an extent, done, and even if, you know, Secret Forces, uh, sells are still going, even if you hit Vanities, no one's gonna be like, well, you know what, you know, fuck it, I'm not gonna buy Secret Forces anymore, you hit Vanities, I'm not buying Secret Forces, no one's gonna think that, Konami. If you hit Vanities down to one, shit, that might promote Necros even more because this card shuts down Necros like fucking hella. So if you hit Vanities Emptiness, then that promotes Necros and then you sell more product with Secret Forces. Like, it's not that hard to figure out. Like, you need to hit Vanities. Like, there's been, it's been previous that, you know, Vanities has been kind of shaking, shaking things around. And, you know, and losing you some profit, but it hasn't been to that extreme since Necros, and it's pretty obvious and clear that you want to make some money off of Necros, so if you want Necros to be the tippity top, if you want them to be the best deck, if you don't even want anything to compare to Necros, you need to hit them, you need to hit these floodgates, because Cleese can keep up with Necros as long as they floodgate the shit out of them, and Vanities is clearly, clearly the culprit, you know, a good place Vanities with no MST in sight can easily win you the game against Necros, and you know, this deck that's supposedly the best deck shouldn't be losing it to a card like this but when you have just a blanket uh negation of special summons like freaking vanity's emptiness then you know you know so uh, i think I'm just gonna go ahead and put it down to one um it's probably gonna be in the same boat and considerations with you know things like regeki and soul charge you know just those cards that one that you know you play one and it's very powerful you get it off awesome but if you don't then oh well you know uh I tried to put Skill Drain in the same boat as this card, but I just couldn't. I just couldn't. I didn't feel like it was, uh, you know, in the same boat. So, uh, I think one is the right number. And if it can, continues to persist and be, you know, completely busted, it'll probably get banned. But I, I don't feel like the card is ban worthy. I mean, it's very powerful, you know. But, you know, if they're not going to ban Soul Charge for the things that Soul Charge did, then I don't think they can ban Vanities. But they're definitely in the same boat when it comes to uh, just, you know, the powerful plays that they can pull off. And, uh, yeah, so that's uh, all I got at Cards at Limited. So I'm going to go ahead and go over it again. Crush Card, Vanities, and any of the, car any of the other cards that I got changed, uh, respectively, that are in the set. They have to be in the, uh, you know, the bling set. If they're not in there, then they're not getting unbanned. So if it's just crush card, it's just crush card. If the others are in there, then them too. Alright, so those are cards at one, not a lot of cards limited. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on to semi-limited. So, as you guys know right now, I've been kind of uh, restrictive, you know, I've been kind of like, no, 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 you know. But, uh, you know, I do have some move-ups, uh, definitely to make Konami some money. But uh, we're definitely going to go ahead and get to those in uh, more of the semi-limited section. So, uh, moving on to semi-limited, first card, Skill Drain. All right, Skill Drain, it's time for Skill Drain to get hit. You know, it's, it's pretty obvious, and you can clearly see that uh, Skill Drain, especially since they're kind of like, hey, step away from Skill Drain, because, you know, Cleans have their own kind of Skill Drain-esque card. So, like, yay, look at it. And they're like, no, Skill Drain, you know. You, know, it, you can't create a card that... You know, for skill drain as for cleaves, yet allow skill drain to be at where it's at. You know, and like I said, I tried to put it in the same boat as vanities. I was like, you know what, vanities to one, skill drain to one. Vanities, uh, they go together hand in hand, hand in. But then uh, no, you know, skill drain is only played in cleaves. While vanities is can easily be thrown in any deck. You know, you know, a well flipped vanities in any deck can crush any other deck as long as you you know have the right stuff. But skill drain. That's just Cleese. Uh, it's another floodgate, and it's definitely hurting to uh, various uh, cards that you're trying to make money off of. You know, I mean, Cleese are done. Cleese are done. The story is done. They're not getting any more support uh, for you know the next set, as we know. And I think for this list, I think indirect hits to Cleese will slow them down to the point where Necros can you know push them down and uh, you know promote 
other decks that they want to make money off of, you know, different size decks, you know, Secret Forces and, and you know, and, uh, you know, the Ascent Jews and, uh, uh, my god, Infernoids, you know, all the, all the things that they want to make money off of. So by hitting the Floodgates, by hitting Vanity's the one, by hitting Skill Dranger 2, you make Cleese more manageable, you know, you, you spread out them, and with Snatch the Opening Bam, you, you spread out the MSTs, you spread out the love, you know? Now you don't have to worry about triple vanities and triple skill drain and, and triple scout and, you know, snatch still and, you know, all them things that you need to uh, MST, you know, because you know, there's going to be less things, you know, are Klee still going to be a very powerful deck? Oh, yeah, sure, definitely. But, you know, will they be, you know, this dominating floodgate of a deck that they are currently? No, I mean, vanities to one is a fine hit, you know, if they get their vanities and Klee's, then yes, it's a very powerful card, but it's that one, you know. And skill drain, you know, the same, you know, put to two, trust that two. You know, if it still continues to persist and be broken, then we can go ahead and push it down to one. I think we can see, uh, you know, Konami kind of do, just kind of step away from the card. You know, and we'll go ahead and get to see what uh, Klee's do if, you know, Venny's at one and skill drain's at two. It might turn into a total, you know, a different deck, but, you know, it, those indirect hits can, you know, make a huge difference. I mean, just look at Shadal's. So, I think that these will be, um, you know... Uh, Cleese indirect hit, you know, Vandy is just overall as a card, and then, you know, just putting skill drain down to two, and, uh, that's pretty much it for Cleese on my list, you know, uh, Cleese are very powerful, but, uh, you know, they, it's hard to set precedence on Cleese, uh, they have no hits in the OCG, and, uh, I'm, right now for the first hit, uh, there's, I really can't point anything, I was thinking about Summoner's Art, but I can't even call that, I think there's only Summoner's Art alone, you know, Scout and, uh, you know, Sacrifice, you know, and if it continues to persist and, you know, it's losing Konami money in comparison to, you know, all the decks that want to make money off of in future sets, then they can dress accordingly on the next list since these lists are so close together. Uh, you know, it's not that hard for Konami to make these subtle changes and, you know, make more major changes, uh, you know, after a list. So it's like, you hit it, and then you kill it. You hit it, kill it. Hit it, hit it kill it, you know. And, you know, sometimes it takes maybe, like, two lists, two, three lists before you kill something. I mean, look at artifacts, but... Uh, you know, it'll eventually get done, and, uh, you know, uh, Klee's skid by, skid by on the last list, because they were mostly, mostly new, uh, you know, then it is skid by, because you can clearly see he was gonna get the reprint, and they made the money off of it, uh, skill drain, skid by, because, you know, it seems like they weren't even gonna go after Klee's, or, uh, you know, they can see it, but, you know, they're just like, nope, not yet, not yet, they make a little bit more money off of Klee's, you know, still getting some more support, but, Cleese are done, so, uh, now, indirect hit, and then if it continues to, so, to persist, we're at the point where they have to, you know, murder the deck, and they can always do it next list, so, skin to two is, um, a fun choice, a fun choice. Alright, so, next card at two, I have Tour Guide, yes, Tour Guide, uh, you know, ton of the conversation on what card to hit in Burning Abyss, do we hit Firelight, do we hit Dante, do we hit Skarn, do we hit, you know, Surd, do we hit Grav, who do we hit, it's Tour Guide, Tour Guide is a you know, a one card Dante is sometimes a, you know, easy setup with Fire League. And, uh, it's Tour Guide. Tour Guide also has set precedence because Tour Guide has also been at two. And, uh, generally Konami likes to go ahead and move cards that have been on the list because they already know how it'll affect the game instead of just, you know, randomly throwing cards on there the, that, you know, haven't been on the list before. You know, this card already has set precedence. This, uh, you know, it's already been in prison. And then we let it out of prison, you know, if we had to bring it back into prison, we already have its information in the books right here, you know, and Tour Guide, you know, she, she, she's a bad girl, you know, she has not been, you know, this little cute girl that she comes across, she's a demon, and she has been, you know, putting in that work and burning this, and it's pretty obvious that it's her, you know, um, you know, a ton of people saying Scarm, but Scarm searchers for her, you know, it's her fault, you know, you know. If you go ahead and put a uh, tour guide down to two, you know, to start with, to start with, this is, this is like, just like Cleese, this is just their first hit, their first tap on the head. If you go ahead and put tour guide down to two with set precedence, then, you know, she continues to persist and burning just continue to, uh, you know, be, you know, one of the dominating decks. And you can always just, you know, all right, well, she's at two, one, you know, it's not that hard. Instead of, you know, throwing like, you know, Skarn and Graf and Sir and all these Burning Abyss S monsters uh, on the list, you can just hit cards that have already been on the list and just hurry them up. So it's Tour Guide, that's the problem. You know? um, so, Tour Guide 2 won't kill the neck and won't, you know, completely murder the deck, but uh, it's definitely a hit that, you know, will slow the deck down a little bit and maybe even change their plays. Maybe they got it, you know, 
maybe run a little bit less back throw, we special summon a little bit more, you know. Uh, so Bury Abyss will not be dead from this hit, and I have one more hit for them. But uh, definitely, you know, it'll slow them down a little bit, you know. They won't be able to go, you know. Tour Guide, you know, Skarm, Tour Guide, Skarm, Tour Guide, Skarm, Tour Guide, Skarm, over and over and over again, you know. And, and you know, that's that might just be enough for a first hit. So um, that is my first hit that I have for Burning Abyss. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my second hit, and my second hit is... Dante, Dante traveling Burn Abyss to two. Uh, yeah, I've been hearing a ton of this as well. You know, more arguments on what should be hit, and uh, it's Dante. It's 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 tour guide and Dante. Those two are the ones that uh, make Burning Abyss so dominating and so uh, just a dominating force is just the, the way that these two interact with each other. So. Uh, of course, I've seen a ton of people say, you know, Dante the one, but Dante the one murdered the deck. You know, you need you need multiple Dantes. Yes, I agree, but three is a little bit too much. By put by putting Dante to two, it changes the deck to the point where they might have to, you know, do plays that they don't want to do just to make sure that they stay consistent with their Dante. You know, you know, I I play Burning Abyss on my channel, and it's like, well, why do I need to go ahead and you know do anything with that Dante in the graveyard? When I can just simply, you know, summon another Dante and summon another Dante and summon another Dante, you know. But if we put Dante to two, you know, it'll have to it'll change the play, you know. If you summon your first Dante and you've already used that Dante and you summon your second one, you gotta do something with that second Dante. You gotta get, you know, Sir on it because if you don't, then you're gonna be out of Dante's and, you know, Burning Abyss can't be without Dante. So maybe you gotta take that Dante and put back a Dante, you know. Maybe you gotta do plays like that. And if that's the case, then yes, the deck has changed a little bit, but, you know, at least slows down the plays, at least changes the deck a little bit. You know? So Dante to two, I think it's, you know, justified hit, you know. Uh, you know, you guys are like, oh, they're gonna hit Dante and make money. Well, that's the secondary market, you know. The set that Dante was in is long gone, so, you know, Common's not really making money off of that. Uh, so, you know, a nice little hit to Dante, to two, uh, with, I don't know, someone in that Dante and Tour Guide. I think that's, man, that's all of it. You know, I don't know, it's, you know, guys are probably like, oh, Fire Lake, Fire Lake, Fire Lake. Fire Lake, I, you know, I sat there and I pondered and I thought about it, and it's just like, as a first hit, I don't think so, you know. Uh, I was thinking maybe Fire Lick the two as well, but you know it's just how searchable and grabby Fire Lick is, you know, especially with you know, uh, you know, with uh, Cagna and Good and Evil and uh, you know the decreasing number of Fire Lick plays that have been as of late. Uh, I can easily see Fire Lake just skidding by on this list again. And, uh, and am I saying, you know, if they hit Fire Lake, I'm going to be like, oh, no, they shouldn't hit. I'm like, no, of course. I mean, if they want to hit Fire Lake, then, hey, more power to you. But I can easily see Fire Lake just, you know, skidding by on this list, not giving a hit. I, mean, I can see Tour God. I can see Dante. And that's pretty much it, you know. If uh, Fire Lake stays at three, the deck is a little bit slower. And like I said, this is just the first hit. And, you know, and if we have to go ahead and, uh, you know, hit the deck again, you know, and, you know, the Lexus, we can easily go, you know, our tour guide down to one, and then, you know, fire relate down to, like, one, and bam, the deck is, uh, you know, hit again, and you can, you know, continue to hit it until uh, it's gone, you know, it's like, it's like nailing a nail into a coffin, you just keep on hitting the nail, you're like, alright, well, first we hit, you know, um, oh my god, what is that Infernity card? Infernity Launcher? And then we go ahead and we hit Soul Charge, and then we hit Barrier, oh, and the nail is almost in the coffin, and Archfiend. There. The coffin is complete. Now get in there. You know? So, uh, like I said, Tour Guide, Dante, that's the first. They hit Hammer, and then we'll go ahead and hit again, hit again, hit. And sometimes the nails don't even need to be done, you know? Sometimes they're, you know, they can't hit it up, you know? Like Shadals. I mean, come on. Shadals are, you know, I, I, never, I didn't really think that Shadals were going to get power creeped like that, but... I can easily see Shadal not getting hit, you know. But I'm not saying like, oh, give him Super Poly back. I mean, I really can't predict Konami just giving them Super Poly back, you know. And you know, if they want, if they wanted to go to the extreme of banning it, you know, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem like TCG Konami would just bring it off of after one list. You know, OCG they would probably do it. You know, if OCG banned Super Poly and they, you know, they would probably bring it back after the list, but not TCG. So, uh, I don't have anything for Shadal's hits, nor bringing anything back. Shadal's are just Shadal's, you know, they are what they are right now. So, uh, yeah, that is another card that I said at 2, Dante. Alright, so, next card that I have at 2, uh, Dark Track Fighter. You know, Dark Track Fighter got unbanned the last list and got put to 1, and, uh, what did he do with this format? Uh, absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. I, I don't even think a single person played Dark Track Fighter. I didn't see Dark Track Fighter the entire 
format at all. You know, uh, with his change, he's just not you know the, the you know, potent power he used to be, and you know he's got surpassed definitely. You know, he's not even top two best. Uh, Sync sevens, you know, of course, Black Rose, and then I, I'd, I'd say Yazi, you know, I'd say Yazi is better than Dr. Tag Fire, so, you know, could, can I make him close? See, all right, well, you know what, you know, we put Goyo to one, he, he didn't do much, so we're gonna put him to two, you know, same thing with Dr. Tag Fighter, so Dr. Tag Fighter, go ahead and go up to two, and no one would care. All right, so, there we go. Now, let's go ahead and get to the movements on my list uh, that are not hits, they're actually moving up. And I'm going to explain and go into detail why I think Konami's going to do this to earn them some money. Because, you know, they they are money. It's all about motherfucking money here. You know, Takahashi sucking signs his paycheck with his nuts. Because, God, Konami's all about that motherfucking money. Alright, so, first card, up to two. Uh, I got Divine Wind of the Mist Valley. Alright, so, you know, in the past, this card was known for its loops and its OTKs and you know a ton of cards got hit because of this loop and OTK etc 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 but um those loops and uh, OTKs are pretty much done they're they're gone you know they're gone with the wind ah uh -huh. uh -huh. oh okay I'll stop but uh, I was thinking, I was thinking, I was thinking, I was like, well, maybe th this time they'll go ahead and, uh, free my nigga Stratos, but there's just a lot of th reasons why they wouldn't free my nigga Stratos, you know, the first thing is, if they weren't going to do it last list, there's really no point in doing it this list, you know, um, the Hero Shakur deck is pretty much done, you know, they, they made their money off of it, and, um, they can clearly see that, you know, they really don't need Stratos, you know, especially with Rona at three, you know, they can clearly see that they don't need Stratos, two, the back row destruction, you know, that's another thing, and and Shadow's effect not being, uh, you know, once per turn, you know, so, um, three, the Shadow's was used in the whole, you know, Divine Wind of Mist Valley OTK-esque plays, but, uh, along with, uh, you know, Birdman and, uh, you know, this, there's, you know, there's a couple cards that were hit with Evolved, and, uh, they kind of stepped away from it, but, Especially with the promoting extensions, not only in Secret Forces, but also in future sets, as we can clearly see since your senses are getting more support. This card is very, very helpful in your senses, because uh, it's very difficult to utilize their, uh, you know, their counter traps and their, some of their plays when they don't have any Senju monsters. You know, you know, unless they have their Pendulum uh, monster, it's kind of hard to go, you know, Secret Technique, and then, oh, uh, well, I don't control this new Sanji monster, because they all return to my hand during the end phase, so I can't even hit you with my counter trap on your turn, like, you know, it's, it's used properly. But if you have a Divine Win, and your Sanji goes to your hand, your hand, you can go ahead and summon you Sanji from your deck, which will, of course, allow you to have a Sanji monster for your Secret Forces, and, you know, it helps promote your Sanjus, you know, not only for Secret Forces, but also for the future, and it's definitely a powerful card for your Sanjus, you know. As long as, you know, Stratus remains banned, and Birdman is at one, and, uh, you know, Harpies, I mean, they, I mean, they're the only deck that can other kind of utilize this with Dancer, but not to the extent that your Sinjus can use it. So, you know, as long as the loops and OTKs are gone, or any of the cards that, you know, promote the OTKs besides Divine Wind in West Valley is gone, then they can go ahead and move this card back up to two, and maybe even three, just to promote more you send you. So I think they're going to go ahead and test the waters at two. And, you know, if they see that it's working fine, they'll probably move it up to three in the next list. But, uh, you know, if, if the if the loop, you know, somehow miraculously returns, they can always just put it back down to one. Or they would probably, instead of doing that, probably just address another card on the, on the, on the, uh, in the loop, you know, if if you know dancer is the one that's caught in the loop, they'll they'll hit harpy dancer while easily continuing to support support this card just because you sent you. So uh, I think that this card will probably go up to two, and I wouldn't be surprised if it did. All right, so next card at two, I have Monster Gate. All right, surprised they didn't move this card up to two uh, when you know they did reasoning. I thought reasoning was gonna go ahead up to three, and Monster Gate was gonna go up to two, but I think they wanted to take it slow and test it. They were like, well. Let's go ahead and move, you know, reasoning. Let's see. Reasoning? Sanjus? You know, I mean, Sanjus. Infernoids? Good? Yeah? Okay? Alright, alright, alright. We're in the clear. Alright. Monster Gate to two. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's the obvious next play. Uh, Monster Gate's a very powerful card, and Infernoids, and they want to promote Infernoids. You can clearly see Infernoids are getting some, Infernoids are getting some support, you know, in the next 
two upcoming packs. So definitely Infernoids uh, would love a second Monster Gate. And, you know, it's been a cool minute since this card has been limited, but uh, the plays that it's uh, doing are not the same. Definitely not the same. Uh, with the, when you summon, like, Shadows and things like that, you can't summon anymore. And, uh, you know, just by uh, tributing a monster and, you know, sending all of them... Uh, uh, you know, Infernoid Monsters just helps this deck play. So, if we can go ahead and, uh, you know, put Monster Kid up to two, uh, help Infernoid's consistency, and uh, promote this, de this card, this deck even more, and make some money off of uh, future sets, then hey, what power to you? So, I think Monster Game will probably go up to two. Alright, next card is another card for Infernoid, um, and I think it will be Burial from the Different Dimension. Uh, Bear from the Different Dimension has been a very, very powerful card in the past, and, uh, you know, especially in the Teledad area, era, and, um, it's been there for a cool minute. Um, has it, pow has it been power created? The, the question, uh, I mean, it's still a very powerful card, but will it help Infernoids? Definitely, you know, definitely they would enjoy a, a second Bear from the Different Dimension, be able to, you know, reuse them, Infernoid monsters that were banished, um, it's better than that one dead card and uh really utilize at this point the one deck that uh competitive wise that's even you know that would even utilize this card is infernoids you know uh you know what i've been scary thought can be like maybe zombies or something like that with mizukis and stuff but you know that's not even on konami's radar because if you know if they were worried about that they wouldn't have put up the cards back in the past you know they wouldn't have moved plague spreader back they wouldn't have moved mizuki back you know so that's pretty obvious that they just don't give a shit about that shit anymore. But uh, by moving Burial, they can definitely, you know, uh, promote more synergies and help them out. So with Monster Gate at 2 and, you know, Burial at 2, we can go ahead and see what Infernoids can do, uh, you know, with the, what, what they have now. And then with, you know, the current support in, like, the two, next two sets. So, uh, yeah, that is my other card that is uh, semi-limited. So that is all I have for semi-limit. So... Let's go ahead and get to unlimited. I don't have much, but uh, yeah, this is almost over. All right, so unlimited. Go ahead, Guardian. Oh, uh, they put it from band to one, did nothing. One to two, still did nothing. You know, people maybe played one, but they didn't play two. You know? and now it's got time to go ahead and be like, all right, well, off the list you go. You know, they've been doing that for a cool minute now with uh, cards that were banned. They're you know, slowly taking it slow, you know. And then the next list, it'll be Dark Shark Fighter. So Dark Shark Fighter will probably go up to two. This list, and Goyo to three, and then Goyo's gone. And then next list, Dark Shark Fighter, three, then go and then Dark Shark Fighter's gone. You know, just the way they go. So, uh... I'm not saying that the other cards, I'm not saying, like, alright, well, you know, Smash still up one, Smash still up two, Smash still up three. Oh my god, I have a heart attack. Hello. No more with Crush card. Crush card is still, like, it's powerful enough to still be at one. But, uh, you know, definitely Dark Knight Fighter and Goyo, you know, they've been power creeped, as you can clearly see. So, uh, Goyo Guardian, go ahead and go back up to three. No one's gonna, you know, even bat an eyelash at that. Alright, and the last card that I have, um,. At three, and I thought about this. And I was thinking, like, like, well, why didn't they do glow up bulb? You know, glow up bulb is that you know it can only the fact can only be used once per duel. So I was like, why not glow up bulb? But then you would just increase the consistency of glow up bulb and descending. You know, I tried to put it in the same build as four, but you know. I mean, once you get a gold bulb, you can always use it. You can always, uh, you know, use the power more. So I was thinking, I was thinking gold bulb, but probably not. You no, know, I, I felt like, you know, if they were going to move gold bulb, it would have been last list. You know, it's going to, you know, it's not like they can't see it. So maybe they know something I don't. Maybe they don't want you to increase the consistency of sending gold bulb. You know, because even if you use gold bulb effect, you know, it's still, you know, a very powerful level of tuner. So, you know, it's not like a uh, spore, but uh, hey, uh, if they don't want to move glow bulb, then hey, then I don't care. So the card, the last card that I have at Unlimited is Advanced Virtual Art. And I personally don't like this. I don't like Advanced Virtual Art because I hate Herald. But uh, it's pretty obvious that, uh, you know, Advanced Virtual Art recently got reprinted twice. You know, they're stepping into this whole, you know, ritual area. Like, hey, look, rituals, that's a thing again. So Advanced Virtual Art, look, it got reprinted. Go ahead and get it. You know, so the Secret Forces, yeah, like, hey, rituals. You know, and they can, they're probably going to look at this card and be like, you know what, this card's been power creep, you know, if, you know, Necros aren't even using it. So, you know, we'll, you know, who cares? You know, who cares? Go ahead and have it at three. Uh, you know, I always thought that maybe this card would move up to three in previous lists, but it never did. But, you know, with its reprint and, you know, they're in this whole, you know, ritual is the new uh, black thing. It kind of seems like they'll go ahead and put the Vance Ritual Art back up to three. So, uh, yeah. So, that is my list. So... Like I said, if you guys want to go ahead and just look at it again, you can go ahead and look in the comment section below. 
So I apologize for this video being super long, but I wanted to go into detail. So go ahead and tell me what you guys think about my list, what I predict Konami will do. And I want to go ahead and hear what you guys will predict in the comment section below. So I am looking forward to seeing what Konami does. Please ban Snatch Deal, please ban Snatch Deal, and uh, please ban Snatch Deal. So uh, thank you guys for all the support. Like I said, I'm Evil Mastery. If you're new to my channel, I am a YouTuber who brings you content every day. You know, I do, you know, live videos, I do uh, card reviews, Diando commentary, a series called Vibe and Y, where I use a Yubel deck each different day, uh, seven different Yubel decks, seven days a week, you know, daily duels where, you know, seven different decks, you know, non Yubel related, I, sometimes I duel by myself and I kind of do like a, what I call like a D-log where, you know, I duel while telling you about my day, and then on, you know, like the weekend and stuff, I, you know, duel with tag partners, so I bring you guys a ton of content, so if you guys could go ahead and uh, hit that subscribe button and uh, start watching my content that would be great so thank you guys for watching my balance prediction thanks for all the support and i will see you guys when the actual april 2014 tcg bandless actually goes up all right guys thanks for watching